Good afternoon. My name is uh, Professor Harsh Chatter. I'm born in India, living in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and I've been coming to your institute in Ukraine for the last 10 years. First of all, I'd like to thank Professor Rizwan and Professor Victoria of the Victoria and all the students for being here and giving me the opportunity of opening doors. If you really would like to speak to me on technology. Do you use technology for storing images? Mm -hmm. When you take your digital pictures, how do you store them? You keep them for yeah. right? yeah. right? You also use it uh, when when you want to work on Photoshop, on color yeah. correction, on those things. You're using technology. Yes. Yeah. Does that help you? How? It's more bright. Uh, it's a sort of technology you need to understand. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. right. Everyone understands this, or I need to translate it? Okay. If you need a translation, just put your hand up. So it saves her the effort. Uh, how do you take pictures yourself? How do you do that? What's the first thing you do when you want to take a picture? Um, I choose a place. You choose a place? Yes, and then I mention what I want to see. You run a digital camera. Um, How does it work differently? I didn't use it before. Never? Yeah. Okay, you're very young then. <laughs> How did this technology evolve? How does technology evolve? I mean, what makes you think of technology? To do things faster, to do things cheaper, to do things uh, in a more secure way, to be able to see things uh, long distance easily, to talk to people around the world. You can only do these things with technology. But what makes, what, what, what plants the seed of technology? How does technology come about us? Are this technology in your purse? Is technology in your pockets? This technology all over you. But how did it suddenly come across you? And what? They want to make the product is like easier. Right. It's why we decided to make a model of technologies to make our life easier. So technology is, the, is basically an outcome of the human need, right? Of convenience. Of making technology makes your life convenient, or does it make it difficult at times? Yeah, which makes it difficult. Not difficult for some? Uh, for some people, maybe. It's sometimes not user friendly. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people cannot understand uh, certain things about technology so fast. And once you enter the room which is called technology, okay, yes, I want. you walk out of that room more intelligent, don't you? <laughs> I think I would. Anyone would. Right? And the reason for that is we do things differently. So for me, technology is a very important aspect. I've been photographing for 30 years. I've been using film. I started with black and white and then color. I started with small format, went to medium format, and very large format. But technology came and robbed me of all my skills. It made things simple for you, but it made it more difficult for me. I had to learn all over again from the beginning how to use <coughs> this new technology. That's something difficult for me. I've been photographing for 30 years. But then I learned it and I understood that it's extremely important and you need to understand and move with the technology because you'll be left behind. The funny thing is a lot of you use digital cameras. You don't know what a digital camera really does as compared to a film camera. Is that being honest with you? Or am I wrong or are you all wrong? <laughs> Whether at your age or my age, we all got to learn and accept technology as something is user friendly. Don't be scared about it. I mean, I'm here, she's there, all of us are here, Professor Victoria is there. We, we feel scared sometimes when it comes to technology because this is simpler writing something with a paper and pen than putting it down on the computer. But so we would go towards technology with an open mind. And please understand that technology is a process. It doesn't happen in one way. It does not come about something 
fortunate. Uh, you understand and you can adapt very easily, very fast. It does not come like that. It comes over a period of time. For example, a lot of you use PCs, right? How many of you use Macs? Not many. But what, ask the people who use Macs, they can't use a PC. And ask the people who use PC, they can't use a Mac. But they understand technology of computers. But as you go higher in technology, it becomes more specific. And you got to be able to understand that. And that is important. Because many times you understand the wrong things in technology. For example, you don't need to know something. And you are spending all your time looking around for it. <coughs> Sometimes you don't realize that it's lying right at this button. And you don't know about it because you haven't read the instruction manual. So it's extremely important to understand what you want out of technology when it comes to photography. Do you want it to work for you in taking your picture? Do you want it in storing your picture? Do you want it in post-production? Do you want it to make it uh, more available around the world? How do you use it? It depends specifically on what your need is. So it doesn't just end up in going to a garden with your friends and taking pictures and good pictures, but what you do with the picture is equally more important. And that's what I'm going to show you on this video and a couple of videos. Uh, the first four slides that I'm going to show you is my expression of what technology is. Uh, and <clears throat> that is basically uh, more of a definition, uh, a scientific definition, as well as uh, one given in the encyclopedia and in the dictionary. Uh, but many times uh, we try to adapt and make shortcuts, and that's why even in the computer we have shortcuts. And these are not James Bond cameras, they're real cameras. <laughs> okay? Pictures. I'll show you some pictures. And that is film. Okay? And that's technology from there <coughs> to there. But it's in miniature. Why would they make these cameras and digital so small? Normally you don't see them, you just go to the bazaar and you see the cameras in digital format. Uh, the ones you can put in your pocket and things like that. There is a need, there are people who use these cameras. You know, they need it specifically. And uh, it's for documentation work and for other works that require miniaturization to make things look small. Everyone has a photographic memory. We remember everything, all right? But some people just don't have film in their mind. You know, that's the way to think about it. They just don't think it's important to remember those things. Color is very important to us when it comes to taking pictures. You know? It's like water when we are thirsty, what it does for us in that sense. We come out as a tourist with a camera, go around the world taking pictures, and then we find our real dreams, you know. So we all are tourists. We, we have that instinct to go out and capture that moment, you know. But eventually we get captured in the whole process when it comes to photography. This is very true. After 30 years of taking pictures, it's the camera. They taught me how to how to see without a camera. And once you keep using the camera, you begin to understand how things are different, and you begin to notice which is not the obvious. Now, very soon you start noticing it in your day-to-day -day life. This is also true what the camera does to us. Uh, it, trans it transforms a, a normal photographer, like you want to be a photographer into an artist. Because the more you use your camera, the more your skills in art form are improving. And as they are improving, you're slowly converting yourself from a photographer into an artist. But the camera is the one that gives you the impulse to keep progressing forward and to keep looking into the artistic field that you have within yourself. It, doesn't, it does get you pictures from outside but it makes you look inside when it comes to your mind and to your heart. 